Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokos Mystery. This will be part 244. We're continuing with our topic, the fall of humanity, the demise of the human race. Scripture teaches the world is currently being moved into a place where it will be judged by God. Day by day, you can see judgment getting closer yes. and closer. Zephaniah, third chapter, verse 8. Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms, nations, kingdoms, mm -hmm. to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. So we find that he's talking about the judgment cup here. So the assembling of the kingdoms are who? The churches and... No, 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 right. no, 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 those are the judgment. But the why nations. is he using the word assemble? Because this is what he's doing. We're bringing them together for judgment. Okay, okay. <coughs> so that's uh, a gathering? Yes. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's going to be go all sorts of gatherings. And in this particular capacity, what we're seeing before our very eyes is a moving of the nations that are going to be judged to the point of judgment. We see we're at a point now where it's 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 reached critical mass because what's going on over there in Israel is explosive. And just to reiterate, at the point that these nations go down to the pit, they know exactly why this has happened to them. Not necessarily. Hmm. <laughs> They're not um, in a, an objective perspective. No, I was thinking the Lord would tell them. No, no, doesn't have to. Okay. <clears throat> what they know is that they have been not done what well, should be done. Okay. And that's enough as far as the Lord is concerned. Right. Give you, he gives us two options. Either we, we do what's right and we'll be hid at the time of judgment, right. or we don't and we become a victim of the judgment. Okay. He keeps it simple. People are going about their merry way, doing their thing, <clears throat> not caring. Not caring. You can't give this to to hardly anybody. No. They don't have time. No. I look at some of the messages that are being <laughs> talked about from positions of leadership of the churches. It's utterly, unbelievably, mind-bogglingly ignorant of what's taking place. The eleventh hour is just about up. The time of judgment is just about here, and they're still talking about baptisms and denominational stuff, and dispensationalism, and fluff that has absolutely nothing to do with the times, the seasons, preparing people for what's about to happen. It's not happening. How is it that we can make? total and complete decisions to do the right thing, to be included on the right side of this judgment. What can we do or is it too late? <clears throat> well, we're doing what's supposed to be done because we're open to the Holy Spirit's leading. Amen. All we have to do is continue to remain open totally, totally committed. And that's what God's just a prerequisite for escaping the punishment that's going to fall on the earth. You see, you see that in Zephaniah. He talks about um, verse 3, chapter 2. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth. In other words, those that have ears to hear, eyes to see. Meek means humility. Those that know what time it is. But they're still on the fence in the sense of they haven't totally committed. This is what he's talking about here. Ye meek of the earth. Or the whole human race. Those that fit in this category. Seek ye the Lord, ye, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment, 
Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be that ye be shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. So he's talking about people that are on the fence. They can tell something's going to happen, but they're not interested in totally pursuing the full knowledge of what's happening because they're being distracted by other things. This is a warning to them. He says, basically get fully in the boat while you can because when the judgment falls, you'll be hidden if you do. This is Zephaniah talking to humanity, the human race. But let's go on. Scripture teaches on a day. Remember we said this is going to happen on one day. Everything's going to change. Scripture teaches on a day set by the Lord, human civilization will be destroyed. Jeremiah 25, verse 30. So would you agree, Mr. Jones, or would you oppose what I'm about to say is uh, if... Okay, for us, we're at this table, we're hearing about this, the best thing that we could do is to come together stronger than ever, not separating, being continuous and like-minded in thought, word, and deed to make sure that we are all strengthened and we're all going the right direction concerning this. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> no separation. Yes, because when the day falls, it's going to be too late then. Notice what it says, verse 30. Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words, saying to them, The Lord shall roar from on high, utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout as they that tread against all, A-L-L, -L, all the inhabitants of the earth. This is a blanket judgment that's going to fall on the whole human race. Jesus talks about it. Turn to Luke, 21st chapter. Verse 35 and 36, Luke 21. For as a snare shall it come on all a -L -O, all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth, the whole human race. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So he's saying the same thing that Jeremiah is saying. This prophecy, this judgment, it's going to come on the whole human race. Nobody is going to be accepted. <coughs> Wherever man is, on the face of the earth, this thing is going to fall. This is going to be like a snare, like a net, like a trap. We're going to ensnare the whole human race. The only ones that are going to escape are those that are counted worthy. No place you can run. These guys that are building their grottos and building their escape um, man mansions and fortresses, uh, thinking that their wealth is going to be enough to get them where they need to go, they're looking from a human perspective. Right. They're looking at, oh, you know, if Russia bombs us, I got a, a, an escape uh, shelter here that's bomb proof. The preppers are prepping, knowing that there's a collapse that's going to come, figuring that they're going to prepare, they're going to have enough food, water, ammunition, all the rest of it. Nobody understands that this goes beyond the human capacity. Yes. They're going to be dealing with entities, beings that are as high of, above us as we are above the amoeba. Sure. They, have, they have a clue. They're not going to be able to deal with any of that. What you're describing um, underlines the fact that nobody understands the significance of the term the age of grace. They really don't know what that word means. It's not and they don't know that they've been able to live anyhow they want willy-nilly, but a time has come. That's it. Finished. No more. Now, this is the real world. <laughs> well, no one you, knows. You get reality shift. Yeah. They're thinking all this is going to be basically what you have here. 
the, the, the Antichrist is going to be some guy that comes out of some country. Um, you're going to have the fall of um, a, a couple of uh, places and countries. America's going to fall. Um, Russia's going to fall. And somebody, the Chinese are going to take over. Or Islam's going to take right, over. Right. They're looking from a human perspective. You don't have a clue that all of that is down, done. You can put a fork in it. Mm. The scripture is plain. You can't dispute this. You, you can't try to twist what he's saying here. The whole human race, all the inhabitants of the earth are going to be caught up in this. So it doesn't matter what country you're in. It doesn't matter where you are. You're going to get caught up in the snare. The only out is turning to the Lord for his protection. That's it. But let's go on. <clears throat> Turn to Daniel 7, verse 23. It's repeated scripture after scripture after scripture. Daniel 7, verse 23. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, shall tread it down and break it in pieces. This is the Shishak kingdom under the Shishak king, who is Lucifer. Give me much plainer than that. <clears throat> Scripture teaches those who are abiding in Christ will be counted worthy to escape the coming judgment. We just read that, Luke 21, 35 to 36. Next principle, Scripture teaches, for those who escape the judgment, God will gather and prepare for the age to come. Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 9 to 10. There is a new age coming. Only those who have been counted worthy to escape the old age have right. been experiencing it. <laughs> Having made known unto us. Now, through his word, we just read it. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, <clears throat> he's talking about when the XY axis crosses, yep. where we're heading to daily getting closer to, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. A gathering from heaven, gathering of the earth. I want to focus on that principle because we haven't covered it as of yet. But you'll find it, Psalms 50, verse 3 to 5. And we'll cover this a little more in future lessons, but this is the basic principle. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. If fire shall devour before him, it shall be very tempestuous round about him. This is Luke 21, where he descends in the cloud. Everybody sees him. And he shall call to the heavens, call to the heavens from above and to the earth, that he may judge his people. He's called into the heavens, but he's judging the earth. In the calling to the heavens, who is he speaking to? He was in the next. Oh, okay. This is scripture. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant oh, with right. me by sacrifice. Yes. The saints who have qualified for the angelic ascension in heaven, the saints on earth who have qualified, are going to merge together and receive their inheritance at the time the Lord descends to earth. <clears throat> 